Oh, hey, it looks like it's live. This is Tim Astral Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I'm using new software tonight. There's a long delay. I'm really sorry for that. i um, trying to make this new software work. It looks like it says I'm live now. There's a delay on my screen. We will see if people show up. That's always the question if people show up. Uh, there's a uh, the question tonight is going to be question of the day. Uh, VW Terok concept, would you buy it? Hey, hey, Juan's here, so people can see the screen. I'm working on it. Hey, Johnny5. So let's see if this OBS software works. I'm going to try to find it here again. I minimized it. And um, if, if first time here, uh, a big truck and SUV fan. It's my passion, so make sure you hit subscribe if you want to be following along. Bell notification be notified of new videos put out. So this is something new. It's called OBS software. I'm going to try to press transition and see if you guys see it. This is the VW Terra Rock, which is, I guess, how I'm saying it. Um, it's can, can we see? Yeah, can we see an image of it? Can you guys see it? That's the question. Um, I'm sorry, Evil. I'm trying a new concept tonight. There's some chat here if you're watching this again on replay. There's some chat. There's an echo in my voice. I'm trying to get the echo. Oh, you guys can see it. All right, so there's echo in my voice. Let's see. Um, let me go to set. So let me let me go to settings and see what the echo would be. Sorry, this is... Uh, a little new built-in microphone uh, audio capture. Let's try this. Uh, can you guys still hear me? I need to. I need to see if you guys can still hear me. Um, so there's that, and then I can go like this. I think. Okay, and I can transition to that. Can I see that? No. Okay, so let me. No. Okay, so. Oh, no echo. Echo's gone. Okay, all right. So let me, uh, it's very low you can hear me. All right. Sorry, guys. We're, we're testing this out. I have this mic thingy. Um, let me, I think I can turn it up somehow. There's nothing way to turn it up that way. Let's go to my, uh, let's go to my settings. Bear with me here. This is uh, high-tech stuff. It's high-tech stuff for me here. I'm trying to use OBS there, uh, Brandon. Um, sound. Um, I... Okay, so it's show volume and looks like the volume's all the way up. Uh, no issues hearing in your end. Okay, so you guys can hear me. Juan, maybe I'm gonna get a little closer to me, and uh, you guys sit there. So let me uh, let me go back to OBS and let me see if I can't get. I don't know why I can't get this next image to to kind of load right. Hmm. So they're all the same image. <laughs> Whoops! I put a couple images down. Um, let me uh, let me delete this one and uh, see if I can't add a new image. And let's just go call it image, and I will see if I can't do this real fast. So it's a uh, Tarak is what I'm calling it. It is going to be on their MPQ or MBQ platform, I believe is what they're calling it. And uh, let me transition here. Oh, look at that! Let me move it. Let me move it over a little bit for you. See. Okay, can can you see the uh, other one? Can you see the other one? See, it's uh, it's yeah, it it could be very cool. Um, I I'm gonna guess it's a unibody truck would be my guess. It, it's got an avalanche bed. If you don't know what the avalanche bed is, the uh, underneath the sunroof there, you can kind of see a little bit of uh, plastic there. It actually folds down, and it's an avalanche kind of bed. So it's crew cab avalanche bed. Uh, I have a driving photo. I don't know why these photos didn't load up. I'm let me work on the interior. Hold on, hold on, guys. This is this is this is exciting stuff. You guys can see the screen, interior, and so I. Oh, interior new. Let me try interior new. Um, I have a photo of the interior. I I have as well. No, uh, yes, it is a ridge line kind of want to be, but it's a concept. So they're gonna they're they are gonna build it. They're gonna build it in. Oh, look at that! They're gonna build it in Brazil. And it's at the New York Auto Show right now, and they're debating whether to bring it to the United States. That's that's their big question. And so I think it'd be really cool. Now, what's interesting about it is uh, it is a foot. It's about a foot shorter than the smallest wheelbase of the Tacoma. So it's really a, a mid-size kind of compact pickup. So, oh, I got a driving image here. Let me see if I can't make this a little bit bigger. Okay. Let's try the driving image. Oh, there it is. 
yeah, there you go. Two row, two row tear rock concept, 193.5 inches long, 73 inch bed extends into the cab. The, um, oh, hey, thanks, uh, DV. Uh, 17 inch wide. So it's the wheelbase is shorter, and I don't know. They could go the turbocharged engine. It it could definitely be turbocharged. Um, it could be like a um. Uh, it, it's interesting. I can see turbocharged engine in a small. I can see all wheel drive. I wouldn't see all four wheel drive. It'd be like a Ridgeline truck ish in that in that a modern day El Camino. Uh, Andrew says, "Hold on, let me uh, let me let me let me look at this uh, scrolling thing." Oh, my scrolling bar is really small. Um. Oh, uh, so M Q P. Yes, thanks, Elliot. Elliot's all above like making sure me uh keep me on track. Elliot and Brandon are like the guys. They're like my copy editors. Um, okay, so so let me go back the interior. We can't. So yeah, you can't see me because then I can have to go to this camera here, and I got to do this transition. See how that works? I, I I'm assuming you see me now. I have a big zit in my nose. It's this side. This side. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it hurts too. Oh, son of a bitch, it hurts. Okay, so that was the. Uh, that was pretty cool. I can show you guys images now on live streams. I can do my little graphic in the corner there. Uh, I can maybe make this box a little fancier. Maybe I'll put some stuff over here. It's got to be. It's it's backwards on my screen. I'm working on it. Oh, and I can even let's try it. You guys want to try something? I know you. You're know, like whatever. Let's try to play my vi my my uh, intro video. Let's see if it works. Oh, look at that intro video. Work. Look at that! Hey, not bad for a hick from Nebraska figuring out this technology from you kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, I can go back and I can uh, show those photos again. I guess I'm looking at. I, I'm gonna. My screen's messed up because it's like it's like a seven second delay, and so I'm just gonna look at your chat and I'm gonna talk to their chat because I can. That's makes sense to me. Um, I'm <laughs> Broski. I know Mark is gonna have to raise his game. It's gonna be crazy. <clears throat> Sorry, I've had a cold for a while now. It's a crossover SUV. It is. It's what it is. But so smaller, to smaller size, right? So easier to get around town. Uh, still get the height of an SUV. You have the avalanche kind of bed. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. What's the sales going to be? You're going to talk probably. I could see two, three thousand units a month in that range. It would be a big seller. But if they take something from the MQP. And MQB platform, Elliot says, they take it from that MQB platform, and they just transition that from other vehicles into that platform. It shouldn't be that expensive to build. So I don't know. I, I think it, there's some possibilities. Towing wise, I mean, towing eight ton, yeah. I mean, it's a quarter ton, maybe two third ton. It's not going to be very much towing machine. It's going to be more of a landscaper, uh, city kind of truck. And I think there's a market for that. I think. People in the city want to have more um, capability. So sorry. So that's that's my opinion. Uh, quarter one sales. I, you know, I did my video on that, Brandon. I thought it was pretty interesting. People, first of all, people were like, "Well, how do you guys even? Why do you even care about this?" I care about sales a lot. And um, so, oh, hey, Doug, I'm gonna show. Hold on, guys, I want to show Doug the photos. Doug, I have something very exciting for you. I figured out this OBS software stuff. So check this out, Doug. So here we go. I'm gonna let's see. Gosh darn it! It just does a, the the one. It doesn't save it, but I can do the transition. So there it is, Doug. There is the VW Tarok. I'd say it like Tarok, Tarok maybe Tarok. I gotta figure out why it only does one image per thing. Hmm. I don't know why it does that. All right, anyway, we're kind of that. Um, I I think that the Ranger sales were a little surprising, but it's probably getting the onto the dealership lots is an issue there. Uh, Ram sales were interesting. What I thought was interesting with Ram sales is they're saying now that one third of their sales were the Ram classics, which makes sense to me. I mean, you could save some money and buy the old, older generation. Uh, Chevy's claiming that the they don't have enough trucks because the crew cab, they only built crew cabs, and that's their problem. They didn't lose the Ram, just don't have enough trucks. 
I don't know. You know, quarterly results are quarterly results. You can make as many excuses as you want, but the quarterly results are quarterly results. And so I think it's going to be a, a matter of time until we see the full results. Now, I'd like to see quarter three, quarter four. I think quarter three and quarter four will finally you get rid of the excuses. You have to get rid of the excuses. And so I'm going to see if I can't do another. Um, I don't know why I cannot do just one at a time uh, image interior. So let me show you the interior again. It just keeps, it keeps, I got to work on this OBS. So I'm going to spend some time tomorrow on the YouTube and figure out what I'm doing wrong. But uh, I do think it's pretty cool. I can show you this guy, this image. We talk about this interior. Um, I'll get back to the chat in a second. But I think this interior is pretty on point. I I like it. I mean, it's very VW, right? It's very German. It very crisp lines. Uh, you can see the center stack is very crisp, right? There's not a lot going on. It's not fancy. It's it's very crisp lines. Uh, the center dash is very crisp lines, right? And so I think it's it's very it's very crisp. I you know I don't think so. Um, yeah, so I I could see it. I could see them building this. I like the um, I don't know why I can't. Let me get no. See all the images go to this same one. Let me do the front uh, front new every time i add an image it replaces all four of my images with the one image i'm gonna work on this guys i'm gonna i'll work on it oh uh, this is a closer up here there's a closer up of this one um oh it's too close let me delete that and start again uh i'm gonna do just i want to do well, you know what i want to do i think the interesting one is the over as a over the top i'm doing my rocky balboa kind of over the top movie reference and i'm gonna get to the chat i'll, I'll respond to the chat questions a little bit Sorry, I'll, I'll get there. But I think this is the most interesting view of it. And I think that that says to me, just like like California, right? That just screams California to me. It screams Sunbelt states to me. Everything like south of you know Mason-Dixon line, I guess. Um, it just, it screams that southern state um, during the summer, or during the, excuse me, during the winter. During the summer, your head would burn under that sunroof. I have friends in, in Arizona and they tell me all the time that they don't like the sunroofs because in the summer it just burns their head. Literally the head gets on fire like from the from um, too much sun. That's what they say. Okay, I'm I, sorry, I'm going to go back. I I'm I know I'm playing around. I'm going to get back. I'm sorry guys. It's a new thing and the chat has exploded and you guys are here. Thank you for coming. And and I should stop. Thank you guys all for supporting the channel. The channel has just gone bonkers this weekend. I had a very good weekend. Uh, um, you guys are getting me a new garage pretty soon, I think, is what's going on. And so it's been very exciting. And I, ask me questions, and I try to respond to comments. I'm behind in some comments. I'm going to do that tonight. Um, I went and played golf and said, I'm sorry. Uh, rather have the Ranger. I'm getting the Ranger next week. I cannot wait to get the Ranger next week. Um, um, yeah, it's not a huge market. So that's what I think about quarter one. I think it's it's just too early. I think Arby's throwing their excuses up. Um, yeah, DB, you like the the new live stream? I think it's interesting. I think that it's, it's it's much better live stream. Uh, I would say it's all wheel drive, Andrews. I don't think it's four wheel drive. I'm not going to New York Auto Show. No, there's not enough trucks at a show. Even though Lincoln's doing their um, Corvair, I think that's how you say it. And uh, I just there's not enough trucks there. It's really expensive. Have you heard anything about it? A mid-cycle refresh for the Ridgeline. Man, that is a really good question, John. Um, I have not. I, You know, the Ridgeline is kind of... They put it out, and uh, I, I will say this to my truck brethren. It's not a bad truck. I know it's not a truck, but it's not that bad. And, I've, and I, I would argue with you... That on dirt roads with the washboards, the Ridgeline does almost as good as a Raptor does. And I'm not, I know, I know, sacrilegious, you guys are all going to unsubscribe now. But I'm telling you, that unit body kind of construction with that frame, because it's got a frame too. The way they built that truck, it does pretty well on that, those conversion, those drives. I wish the uh, front end was less Honda-like. I wish it was more truck-like. But yeah. Um, I have not heard anything about a mid-cycle refresh. I that's a good idea. 
Um, I should. Um, I don't have my notes with me tonight. I should. I should do a story on that because I. I have not heard a thing, and I don't know that Honda's going to do a lot because the, the sales volume that they're getting in Ridge Line is what two, three thousand units a month, and so I'm not sure that it dictates much investment from Honda to do much of a refresh. I, I feel like it's going to be a frontier thing where it's going to it's going to go for multiple generations before it gets refreshed. I, I just don't feel like Honda really wants to play in the marketplace. They have something. It's cool. They walk away from it. I think that's where they're going to be. Uh, the RS ap- pickup April Fool's joke looked better than BMW. <laughs> I know. That was funny. <coughs> I'm also interested in Ridgeline refresh and Passport refresh. You guys, are, I mean, I don't know a lot about Honda. I've owned Honda for a couple of years. I have different Hondas out there. I love their small engines. I use them in uh, snow blowers and... If I can buy a lawnmower with Honda engine, I buy it there. But I have not seen very much news about doing that stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I will reach out to my Honda contact. She's not. It's interesting. We we don't have a good connection. Zero sixty time on that like four days. Uh, Ranger sales were bad. Yeah, it's interesting the concept. Long car with a bed. It's so Andrew. It's that's a big vehicle for the rest of the world. We happen to do full size trucks in the United States, and so it's a different cultural thing. And uh, I could see them selling that in in multiple countries where the Hilux is doing really well, or the the uh, the Global Ranger is doing really well. Um, people want those smaller pickups, but they still want to be able to put a, a two by four in the back. Chevy lost in sales because Ram is building better trucks right now and offering just as good, if not better, discounts. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the Chevy reps approached me, uh, not approached me, we were discussing this over some drinks, and uh, they see the incentives. I don't see the incentives. And so there's some conversation about, you know, the reality is at the end of the day, no matter how good your features are and how good your engine is, how good your powertrain is, a cash in the hood sells trucks. That's the reality of it at the end of the day. And so that's going to be always the big incentive to get people to buy. That's why they call them incentives. Hello. Kind of put together. Um, and so I, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. There's a lot of profit margin in trucks um, because they price them higher because they create that margin and they don't cost so much to make, even though they tell us they do. And so uh, incentives are always going to win. I think Chevy's got more room for incentives as a company than FCA does. FCA just paid off their debt. And so I think they're doing better, but I don't know that they're doing that much better. Uh, I know it's confusing. Aaron. Car companies must name and market everything. MQB, TN. Yeah, I know. It's just. And this platform nonsense was crazy over the weekend. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I'm trying to catch up on this stuff. Yeah, sorry, John. I, I, I missed your question. You answered it tw- twice. I hope you heard my uh, um, response. I hope you heard my response. Uh, can't. Sorry, damn. I'll go to it. It doesn't clean does OBO show any real trucks? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can show you some real trucks. Uh, who buys it? What's the market? It's uh, city people. City people and landscapers. I like the VW Tick 1 in orange. It looks very nice, but I'm waiting to see the R model. You know, I think I had a Tick 1. Sometimes I get those. Um, I, I have uh, three videos this week, three reviews going live. There's a Tundra SX package going live tomorrow. Uh, a Hyundai Santa Fe ultimate going live i think thursday or something like that and the gmc acadia black edition going live on friday um so yeah i've been uh, there I, I was out of town last week so i didn't get many videos but the videos i did like exploded as well and the uh interest right now this is interesting you guys may be interested in this is that uh the i've had uh, a lot of growth in my views over the weekend on the 2020 chevy heavy heavy duty video i did so apparently people are getting interested in heavy duties now because that video took off. So I don't know why that's making a difference right now. And what the hell, where is the Ford Super Duty information? Where is that? I don't know. Um, I, I am going, uh, the brand new want to know this. I'm going next week. Yeah, next week we're going to go see the carbon fiber bed get built in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'll be touring the facility to build the Fort Wayne. I'm going to do a video on that production facility, Fort Wayne Assembly. I'm going to do a video. I promise you I'm going to do a video. And so I want to see what the price is going to be. They sent a press release out, and it was – I didn't run it. I need to run it. I, I've been busy, but uh, it didn't have pricing. I, I'm, I'm sorry. you got to tell me what the pricing is going to be. That's the biggest question with that bed It's going to be the pricing. <clears throat> Tim, can you attempt to change the oil in the Ranger? Yes. 
Yes, it will be part of my video. I don't know if it's going to be part of my review as a whole or if I will do like a question of the day kind of video on it. I don't know if it's going to be standalone or part of the video. I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to take a look at that because, yeah. No respect, no self-respecting straight southern man below the Mason-Dixon line would buy that. Sorry. You know, there is. Uh, of course, yeah, I don't know if I pronounce it. I, you know, so Lincoln went from letters to names, and now they create these names we can't figure out. Tim is a fight with a ranger. Tim versus ranger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any idea to refresh the Colorado? I haven't heard anything new on the Colorado. Um, what do we have? What was it? 2016? Uh, was it? They came out 2016 or 2015? Uh, I could Google it real fast, but uh, so let's see. Um, let's do it. Uh, Chevy Colorado. I can give you an idea. Uh, should be Colorado. Should be Colorado. I, I like to do the wiki. I don't. I don't trust Wikipedia that often. Um, it does give me some base information sometimes. Uh, yeah. So when they come out, first generation, second generation. Uh, let's see, second generation. Uh, twenty. Really, twenty twelve? No, U.S. market. Twenty thirteen. So it came out as twenty fourteen. So we're at 2019 right now, right? So that's five years. Huh. So typically it's seven. Um, so, but we just had Gladiator come out and Ranger come out and Frontier's going to come out next year. So that would lead me to believe it's going to be pretty soon. I just hope they don't screw up the front end. I, I, think, the, I, I think the Colorado is perfect the way it is, but... My goodness, that front end that they did with the Silverado. And they did have the Camaro, too. The Camaro looks terrible. I don't do cars, but the Camaro looks terrible. And so I hope they don't keep that same front end. But I haven't heard anything. But let's see. So they did Silverado. They did Silverado Heavy Duty. So it seems to me it'd be soon. It seems to me that if you follow that time frame, it would be... So it's 2012, we said, right? No, it's a 2014 model. Oh, it it shipped as a 2015 model. Excuse me, 2015 model. So 2015 model, 2019. It's not behind. It's not late. Seven years is about your rotation. You usually do a mid cycle refresh three and a half years in, which they could call the Bison their, their mid cycle refresh. They could have called that. They could have called the the Canyon Denali's mid cycle refresh. Uh, they just, I know they killed the manual transmissions. Um, so yeah, I would say, I'd say 2021 would be my guess. That'd be my guess. So that'd be seven years. And yeah, that'd be my guess. Uh, which time was nice when it came out in 2016 or 2006. Actually, best class several areas. They've not made any improvements since then. Yeah, they kind of play in the market. They kind of don't play in the market. Uh, sure, Andrew. Uh, uh, welcome, Trenton. Yes, Trenton. Hey, yeah, if you guys can get some likes to this video. If you're watching this video, give me a like, would you? Uh, yeah, click the like, thumbs up, subscribe, and slap the notification button. Yeah, I would really appreciate that. It really helps me a lot. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, again, fire your questions away. I will do my best to answer them. I, I don't hear a whole lot of news on it. Except you guys bring it. The thing. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. I really appreciate the live streams and your questions because you get me thinking about ideas I hadn't thought about before. Um, and that's a really good question, John, that you had um, on the Ridgeline, on a Ridgeline getting uh, redone. That's going to be interesting because you're right. It is time. It is time for them to be there. Uh, they don't offer a bed line with carbon fiber bed. You don't need it, Elliot. You don't need the bed line with carbon fiber bed. I, I checked it out. You don't need it. Uh, yes. TV, ton of news by chance. Do you have any shock and awe news covering during the Forerunner redesign? I have not really heard of anything, of, but I am interested. You know, I saw it um, on YouTube t today. I saw uh, uh, TRD Blue John, this guy. I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of 50 50 on his content, but he had shocking news on 6th Gen Forerunner being unveiled. And I, th I thought that was interesting because um, I haven't heard a damn thing of forerunner and i get asked the question a lot i've had toda actually ask me the question from their employees because they want to see it too i think it's very interesting that the tacoma and tundra get all of the press 
but Sequoia and Forerunner just get left out in the, the lurch. And Sequoia and Forerunner are very old. They're very old. And I don't know why we're not making more of a stink about those two vehicles. Highlander gets redone. Camry gets redone every year. I mean, it's freaking ridiculous. Um, I was thinking they were going to redo the Forerunner because they couldn't get the sensors to work right. Um, if you know about Toyota's current plan, it's that every vehicle they offer is going to have their advanced safety equipment. And that's the reason why the... Try to get it right. Uh, the 19 Forerunner TRD Pro did not have um, not have sensors. I want to say it was the frontal cra crash sensors, and it didn't have like adaptive cruise control. And and the reason for that was, and that with the the bumper, they couldn't figure out how to get the sensors to place in the bumper. With the launch at Chicago. And they showed up the new Forerunners, and they said the new the new stop they'll have the, the sensors in it because they're doing the last one, doing the last one. They redesigned that front clip to include those sensors. I think the Forerunners could do two things. I think the Forerunner needs a new engine, and I think that the interior the the interior and the center stack could be redesigned, and you'd be done. I mean, it, it'd be that easy. I think that that's that's as easy as they can do it, and I don't know why it's taking so long to get that point. Uh, Protec bed. I know. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking about your Protec bed. You sent me an email. I was thinking about that too. Uh, Turbo four and Silverado with the ten speed would be sweet in the Colorado Canyon. I I agree. I think there's somebody made a comment about that on my Silverado video that that'd be the perfect application for that. And I think that'd be that's an interesting idea. Oh yeah. So Brandon, I'm sorry, you're commenting in. I'm a little behind. The comments are behind. Guys, I'm doing my best. Um, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, would here there be a need for a bed line and a carbon fire bed no there's not you know you don't need it there's a report two percent might make it in colorado yeah yeah for the price colorado canyon needs more feature content cooled seats push button start radar cruise LED headlights memory seats etc yeah I, I think that's gonna be refreshed elliot i think they need to do that i need my dead horse beating stick we'd rather drive a diesel tundra with a dual rear wheel option it's not going to, it's not going to happen. And Johnny, you saw the Mike Spears interview, right? Uh, I mean, he was very clear about the future of Tundra in that, I thought. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, I want to say something about the Canyon Denali. I don't think the Canyon Denali is sell, sold as well as they think it's going to sell. And I think that is the price. I think that's the ceiling. I think 50 grand is the ceiling for uh, mid-sized trucks. Put it out there. And I think that the uh, Jeep Gladiator in the Rubicon package with all the bells and whistles gets 50 grand. I think it's really going to challenge those customers that spend 50 grand on a mid-sized truck. I think it's going to be really, really a big challenge for them. Uh, all right. So John says, problem with all GM... I'm sorry. I drink whiskey during this live stream. So if you don't have a drink, pour a drink. Oh, I got some uh, doing the crown tonight. Uh, drinking it straight these days. I uh, I decided not to mix anymore. No water. So just doing a straight crown. I kind of like it better. I'm kind of it, it's an, it's. I've decided that whiskey's a, a acquired taste, like coffee is, or beer when you're a kid drinking beer. And so I've learned to, to drink it straight. Uh, problem with all GMC and Chevy v trucks lack adaptive cruise. I, I thought that was terrible too, and I asked them about it, and it was a decision they made. It, there's nothing that prevents them from doing that feature in their trucks. It's a decision they made not to offer it. I just still scratch my head, you know, scratch my head over that, and I, I don't know. Uh, let's see, why don't they redesign the Sequoia? I don't know why. I don't know if I missed it, but if you heard anything about the Frontier refresh next generation, I, you haven't missed it, Benjamin. Um, it's on my. I, I'm going to do a video this week on that. And I'll explain all my reasons for what I think they're going to do and uh, what they think they should do. I have not heard anything definitive on what they're going to do. But I will give you my opinion, and I will do a video this week. I promise I will do a video this week. I will make a note. I have to do a video this week. Um, oh, that's this. So video this week, I will have to do... I, I've been. It's been three weeks, Benjamin. It's been three weeks I've been sitting on this damn story idea. And it's it's gonna be a twenty twenty one Nissan Frontier. 
what to expect. And I will put together, I need to do a little research on it. I need to do just a little bit of research because I'm not sure exactly all of the thing I want to talk about. Um, but that is something I will will do. And I, I'm going to do John's question. I want to I look at the Honda Ridgeline a little bit closer because John is spot on right that that is a little bit older now. And so I'm surprised that I haven't heard anything at all about that. It's way too expensive midsize, Elliot. I agree that features should be there, but why drive the price to mid-50? Yeah, mid-50 seems right. The Courier seems right up my alley. My 2017 Cummins has all my towing needs. My Samurai does all our road need. For work, would be great. You know, Joel, there, there is a strong demand for a Courier, and I think that this... I'm going to show it again. I have OBS, guys. This is cool software. I'm going to show this again. Uh, I think this could be a Courier competitor... And this would be the right size and right kind of vehicle for a lot of truck fans. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to that. I'm sorry. You can take me to take me to task over that. But I think for that customer, I'm not talking heavy-duty customers. I'm not talking uh, self-respecting Southerners below the Mason-Dixon line like Johnny Five says. I'm talking specifically about uh, city dwellers, landscapers, people who don't need that big of a truck. And they want to just have some capability. Uh, Carl needs to be racy, but yes, I'm sure it's on a list, Brandon. Uh, no, we'll go the Tundra Diesel. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's just, it is nice. I, yeah. Screw safety features. Lane Assist is the dumbest upgrade ever. <laughs> Upgrading quotes. Um, I don't use Lane Assist, uh, but I do like adaptive cruise control. I, I'm going to tell you, I, I drive to Denver, which is a 180 miles. Adaptive cruise control is a damn nice feature. You get ZR2s over 50000 now, too. They sell them in the rebates, bring them back down. Yeah, so where's that line, Brandon? Where's that line? Is it going to be 50? Is that the highest we're going to get? Or are we going to go 60 with midsize? They're, unlike full-size trucks, I think midsize has a cap. I think there's a cap on that. I just don't think that it's going to go that much higher. I think midsize, full-size trucks can go higher, but I think midsize has a cap, and I think there's going to be a, a, a problem there. As far as getting above that cap. And I wonder about when the Gladiator comes on board and the Ranger comes on board, and let's say this Tamar comes on board, and hey, Hyundai Santa Cruz concept comes out. They're still talking strongly about bringing that truck out. So I, I wonder if the mid size truck market is going to expand, include all these trucks again, or Toyota's going to lose sales, or Hyundai's going to lose sales, or what's going to happen in that mid size truck market. And if you guys notice, I mean, you probably did because you watched my video, um, the sales quarterly one update i did i broke out full size mid size because they just think that mid size is becoming its own marketplace and i know one guy commented that he cross shopped a uh, cross shop something for a colorado diesel and he bought the colorado diesel because it totaled everything they need and he's cross sizing a he was cross shopping a full size mid size i know there's customers out there that do that i understand that but i don't think it's that big of a customer base of consumers doing that I think if you want to go midsize, your reasons are size, parking your garage, uh, getting it out of the bed, getting it out of the truck, and you want a smaller truck. I think if you want to go full size, you know, you want the bigger truck. You have room to park it. You're not worried about that kind of stuff. You want more store, storage room in the truck. I just think that they're different trucks these days, and I just don't think people are cross shopping them. It, to me, it'd be like cross shopping a compact sedan with a three row SUV. They're just different. Uh, lane assist can uh, yeah plus one in the four runner update yeah it, it seems weird four runner has been lagging so long. Lane assist can be annoying by adaptive cruise and heavy traffic. It's a bit yeah. Adaptive cruise and heavy traffic is a bit, the adaptive cruise is awesome. A Jeep Gladiator Rubicon costs sixty thousand. I, I think so. I think if you knock out the bells and whistles, so that that's my problem. That the not my problem. That's my concern with the Gladiator, is you have one bed choice, one cabin choice. And you have a high price point. So is it going to hit a, a point where it's going to be too much money for the customer? Like I said, if you hurt GM trucks, safety ratings, yeah. And I'm sorry, but I think people can want to know about safety ratings with trucks. I've done a couple of videos now. They've really taken off. People want to know about if the truck is safe. That's a question. Uh, thanks. Look forward. To, I, I, again, Benjamin, I will do it. I'm sorry it's been so long. It's been saying my list. I will, I will knock it out. Uh, it's a rumored Mitsubishi will bring Montero and Radio on a refreshed platform. Yeah, and so if you look at the who's at Mitsubishi, it's uh, Fred Diaz, 
Fred Diaz used to run Ram. Then he went to Nissan to run the Titan program, and now he's in running Mitsubishi. So I theorize that as well. Uh, I think they should. I think Mitsubishi needs to. I don't think Mitsubishi has the capital to do it, and I don't think Nissan has the capital to support Mitsubishi with Gon being in prison, the board flipping over, Renault causing a fuss. I think there's too much turmoil going on right now with the Nissan, Renault, Mitsubishi tri-alliance for that to happen. I think if that reliance was healthy, and I think if Gon was at the charge, like, leading the charge like he used to be, I think we'd see it, but I think there's just so much turmoil right now with Nissan. I really get concerned. Uh, yeah, I did see that the uh, manual option was dead for the Colorado Canyon. Looks like the Touareg. Uh, VW SUV with the back. Yeah, it could be a Touareg, yeah. Well, I mean, the Ridgeline is basically a pilot with a bed. So it looks like it wants to bring a pickup truck to America. Dumb idea. It's not going to work here in America. Hey, Boise City Millport. How you doing, buddy? I, uh, I've been trying to catch your videos. Uh, Adaptive Cruise Control. Only thing I would like my vehicle. Everything else I don't need. Yeah, I don't know. VW needs to bring a truck to America. They've need, the Amarok needs to come to America for years, and they've just been dumb about it. Uh, they need a truck in the United States. It, would it sell well? I don't know. I don't care. I think they need. They just need something in that segment. They need something in that segment. Um, for the courier, price and bed size would be deciding factor for me. Frontier is closest. Been up with twenty year old Ranger. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that want even smaller because uh, full size has grown. Midsize has grown. Now you have this, I would call it a compact truck, in my opinion. It's called a, it would be a compact truck that's not on the marketplace. There are no compact trucks in the marketplace. And so I think there's a gap there now. I think because the size has grown, there's a new gap. And I think the courier could be a filling that gap. Uh, I think Chevy would bring back the extreme or a lower truck's dead. Lower trucks are dead. Sorry. I don't think anybody's going to bring back. They're going to bring back the lower trucks from factory. They're also not going to bring back the, um, oh, what we used to call those things. Uh, the regular cab, short bed. Um, they're not muscle trucks, but uh, uh, Brandon Elliott, somebody's going to comment on, down below. But um, I, I I don't know anybody that's doing that. I don't think you're going to do it. I think it's to be up to the consumer. Let the consumer do it. Minivan market is about to take a hit. In the minivan, really? Uh, I have a... Uh, Toyota Center right now. I took it, uh, <laughs> went to the farm and went through some deep ruts. And I think I caused the wheel to go off balance. I have to take a dealer tomorrow or Wednesday, whatever I'm going to do. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to have that fixed. Oh. I shouldn't full size of a cap. I feel like in 20 years we'll see 100 grand light duties. I hope I'm wrong. No, I don't think so. I don't, I think we'll see them. Yes. I don't think it'll be a cap because. What I think that people are missing is what the one-ton truck did in 2000, the three-quarter ton does in 2018. And what three-quarter ton would do in 2000, the half-ton does, right? And so I think you'll find customers who are gonna, who are gonna they used to buy the $70,000 three-quarter ton with diesel, are gonna move down market to a half ton diesel because the capability is there so much. I think what's going to happen is I think the three quarter ton and one ton market is going to take a hit on sales volume as customers move down to full size because full size trucks do as much as three quarter one ton do these days. When you're talking about a full size truck that can tow 35,000 pounds, when the full size truck is 2,000, towed like 15,000 pounds. <laughs> There's a lot of change in the marketplace. And I think that a lot of fleet buyers and customers are now going, why pay the premium for that one ton when I can get a half ton? And so they'll move down market, which is going to move the full size, the average price for full size truck higher, and but it's going to diminish sales from three quarter ton to one ton. So I think that's what's going to happen. I, In my opinion, when I look at what customers are doing, you know, I, I just feel like a smart consumer is going to do that. A smart consumer is going to say, man, you know, my three-quarter ton used to do this, but I can do a half ton instead? Yeah, I'm going to do a half ton instead. Um, if Mitsubishi make the larger Montero not the support, it would still like hotcakes because a lot of the Monteros are still on the road here in Puerto Rico. Sure, the paint is faded and some are rusted. Uh, I think Mitsubishi needs to commit to a plan. Uh, they have some cheap cars. They have some cheap SUVs. 
And when you look at the, I just had the Eclipse Cross. Yeah, and there's a video on this. And my friend Aaron and I did the video together. Um, it's cheap. And I think that's the value of play. That's fine. But Nissan's doing cheap too. So you have two cheap automakers doing stuff together in the marketplace. I think there's going to be some problems with that. I think they need to position Mitsubishi as the value-driven brand. Maybe Nissan's mid-grade. Or I, they're going to figure that part out. Um, I have a 2019 Forerunner TRD Pro. Is none of those advanced? Yeah, I, I want to say, yeah, because 2020 will be the changes, Andrew. Um, the midsize truck cut is going to grow. The current trucks will have to do a lot better. These trucks are lack, still lacking a lot of features. Yeah, yeah wrong as well. I'm a contractor. I want a ladder rack on my new heavy duty truck. A secondary small truck's my goal. Yeah, I I could see that. I common thing with Toyota Mike's first vehicles that they rarely get redesigned. He doesn't have any money. He's finally starting to get this money. Um, it, he used to bitch at me all the time about the damn Camry executive engineer. The chief engineer for the Camry, we get tons of money. He reads on the Camry every couple of years. Mike could, would be squabbling for 10 bucks. I mean, he just used to... It's just interesting the conversation we've had over the years. Uh, what do you think about the Ford Raptor and new engine options for the Rap? You know, it's interesting to me. The Raptor is such a debate between performance and sound. Okay, so uh, I did this in my video on the Raptor review I did, and I, I talked about it quite a bit, I think, in that video. I don't know. Sometimes I just talk, and I hit record, and <laughs> stuff comes out. And I don't know where it goes to, just stuff comes up. Um, it's that I think that if you look at the new Raptor with 3.5 liter uh, uh, turbocharged V6, that's the new high output, that powertrain in that truck is faster than the old Raptor. It just is. It's just faster. But it doesn't sound that great. My concern with the Raptor is, and I think Ford is seeing this a little bit, is that I think it's awesome, the performance-wise of it, but it's usability of the performance. So we can build a truck now that does 0 to 60 in whatever, how many seconds, but where do you use that at? And I said to a guy, I said, I don't want a truck that goes that fast. And he's like, why would you want a truck to go that fast? You can, you can you know, burn rubber and all that kind of stuff. I said, I said, look, I said, I'm always or often carrying stuff in the bed of my truck. What happens if I stuff my bed in truck and I hit the gas? Stuff goes flying to the back and beats against the tailgate. I don't want that to happen. It's why the, um, the hydrogen-powered fuel cell semi can do 0 to 60 in like 4 seconds or something, or 6 seconds, whatever they can do. And uh, but nobody drives it that way. No semi truck driver drives a hydrogen fuel cell at the capability that it can do off the line. The fundamental reason for that is because the cargo in the trailer goes sliding to the back. So I don't want a truck that goes that fast because that's not my goal when I'm driving a truck. I'm, I'm, I'm hauling something, I'm, I'm doing something. I like riding them. I think they have plenty of power for me. They're not Porsche 911 power. I argued. I got into a um, discussion with a former um, editor of, of Car and Driver. He was the main editor of Car and Driver. And uh, him and I had a dinner uh, recently. And uh, I had some things to say. And we had some things to say. And uh, it was a, uh interesting video or interesting dinner. And I should have done a video on it because I was pretty hot about it. And um, he doesn't understand trucks at all just frustrated me but he thinks trucks are slow and he thinks trucks have no power and i'm like it's a different kind of power and he goes well when i want to pass somebody on the highway and i get my Porsche 11 i want to do 120 flying by them that's the power i want and i'm like you should be in jail from having you know driving so fast that's my attitude towards that i want power to tow i want a big throaty engine look my 62 Chevy C10 has dual exhaust on it. It's a 283 V8. It is 0 to 60 in about a mile and a half, right? I mean, it doesn't have the power, but it sounds cool. That's what I, I want it sound. And so I'm on the aspect of saying I want sound. And I think Ford missed that with the Raptor, is that guys who buy the Raptor are not going down Bahaing as much as they think. There's this whole thought process now that I have that I just... I'm going to go on a tangent here. Excuse me. I'll get back to your video comments in a minute. There's a whole thing I have about this whole idea 
of building all these off-road oriented trucks and they build them for the southwest United States. And so they Easter Jeep Safari is going on right now and they have all these trucks there and these Wranglers there and all kind of stuff. And there's all these people in Moab and also and I've been to Moab, I've been to these places. They're beautiful places. Rock crawling, awesome. I wanna go camping for a weekend, and go rock crawling. Absolutely. Sign me up. I'm all day. But <coughs> it's if you not look at the United States and you do the, you know, whatever the Maine and the Michigan kind of stuff, then they go down to Florida and go around. You're talking about just one part of the United States is southwestern United States. And you're going to build a desert Baja racing Raptor for this much United States when the rest of the country is this big. That's my concern with it is, is you're focusing on just this much of the United States. And what about everybody else? And so that, I think that's the issue right now is we have all these trucks getting built for these areas. And in my area, I'd have much more uses for a power wagon with the winch and the uh, the wheel articulation than I would with a Raptor in my area. And I just wonder about if a guy in Minnesota is going to want to buy the Raptor because it looks cool or because it sounds cool or because it's fast or it sounds cool. I think that there's a miss there. Uh, we like to see heavy duty trucks included in safety testing. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I did see the, the blue TRD John video. What I got from it, I may have to watch it again, was a 400 roll share that Sequoia frame, something like an F1 frame. I think he's making stuff up. Uh, Scrap the question, didn't finish a little bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is probably bringing 400 builds to the San Antonio plant. I, I'm not seeing that. After being to Hara, I'm not seeing that at all. Because the Prado and the GX460 and everything fits in that line, I don't see it's going to happen. Don't bring it right to Raider or Montero. They would do a blazer. Huh. Personally, I'm not a fan of Fred Diaz. He should not work in all months. He has some good ideas, but he has some shitty ideas. Okay. So, boys, he's, he's got an opinion. Fred Diaz is a great guy. He's a nice guy. Um, I, I, he just, yeah. Mazda stopped building a little truck. Yeah. Sport trucks. That's what I was trying to say. Sport trucks. Man, yeah, it's been a while since I've been on a YouTube channel. It's like too crappy around here, so I haven't been able to make any videos. Oh, sorry, man. Uh, you live in a great part of the country. You should take advantage of it. I'm going to see one for Ranger in the street, and I was sort of visiting the shopping mall. And then, huh. Hey, Sean, long time no talk. Hey, we got a new uh, OBS software I'm playing around with. To be honest, I should be where it's at. Yeah. I like the Ford Ranger. I wish it sells like hotcakes. I, you know, it's interesting. People were like, hey, Ford Ranger is going to sell like hotcakes. It's awesome. Now it's like, hey, Jeep Planet is going to sell. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be whatever next. The media, and I'm part of this too, we're so fickle. It, it's, it's the latest thing that gets our attention. And that's what we're getting. But yet again, the Ford, uh, the Nissan Frontier, it sells twenty thousand units. So yeah, it's it's gonna be like it's gonna be one of those things. Uh, thoughts on twenty twenty Escape? It looks like an e pace to me. Yeah, I I haven't seen it in person. It, photos are always hard, and videos are always hard. I didn't get invited to the Ford Escape event, but I got invited to the Ford Explorer event. I don't know. I can't figure out Ford out. But uh, I want to see it in person. Um, I thought the last model was fine. I don't have any problems with that last model at all. And uh, I worry about that inf that infotainment screen on the dash. Uh, the, the Explorer has it. It feels like an afterthought to me, guys. It feels like an afterthought to me. It just doesn't look that good. I also love the new Ford Expedition. I only have one seen one two weeks ago. Um, Expedition, that's the one I drove. I drove the Expedition hunting. They rattle a lot. They had a lot of rattle in it. It, they need to improve their build quality. Uh, oh, so there's something. Hey, good night, Johnny Five. I got uh, 12 minutes left, guys. Uh, to be honest, Jim's a bit of confusion right now. I'll give you an example. 2011 through 2017 Chevy Connects were big and comfortable and roomy and had seats. Yeah, they were big trucks. Uh, however, the 2018 2019 Econox are smaller, quite not quite as cap comfortable as Princeton. What's up with that? Uh, I think they're trying to make room for the Traverse now. They're trying to they're trying to create really clear vehicles in different classes. The Mitsubishi Mirage is a crappy car and they get low horsepower. You know why people buy them? They would, when they buy a Honda Ascent, which is better, and I don't know why. What the chances that Honda brings their mid-size pickup to North America? To North America. Blah 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 blah. May need more Crown to fix this. I got a little uh, theme, I think. Um, I think very high, very high. They keep talking about it. There's a, I did a video on it, I think. They keep talking about it. They're really strong on that. Yeah, they're, they're going to bring it to North America. I, I don't know what year they're going to do it. I, I'm i going to go 
as this channel grows, thank you very much again. Uh, you guys gave me some income. I will be in L.A. this year. I think I'm going to go to L.A. Because if any... Here's the thing. California is the mid-sized truck market of the United States. They sell more mid-sized trucks in California than they do anywhere else. Texas is the full-size truck market of the United States. So if I, I think I'm going to go to L.A. because I feel like there's going to be news in L.A. that I will want to know about. And so I believe if Honda is going to do anything, they better do it in LA. It's their home area. It you know their their PR teams there, headquarters is there, North America headquarters is there. LA Auto Show is big for them. So if I'm going to say anything about uh, LA, I think LA is going to be huge this year for mid-sized pickups. Uh, no one uses a Raptor like a truck should use. I've yet to see a dirty mud color covered Raptor in a red one. Yeah, there's way too many Raptors at Walmart. Uh, to me, Honda is way better than Mitsubishi because they're coming out with new SUVs and cars on right. They're coming out with new SUV in three days. Yeah, uh, Hondas. Doing a lot of good. Problem with Honda is they're with Kia and they're a small company. That's the problem with Honda. They have limitations on capacity. And I wonder, I wonder about Ram capacity. Why is nobody talking about Ram capacity right now? Ram trucks keep growing. They're matching color, Chevy Silverado. Where's capacity even come from? They're going to redo Warren. They have a truck. They have a plant there, but and they're adding more plants. They're trying to bat, build more capacity. But will Ram lose its growth of sales back to Chevy just based on capacity problems? A la Toyota. Toyota's had the capacity problems a long time. You're looking at the Raptor wrong. Americans love excess Raptors. 5.0 EcoBoost would sell like gangbusters. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm looking at it wrong. I'm just I'm saying that yeah they, they would they the uh, there was a rumor that they're going to use the Mustang engine the Mustang GT engine and that be cool. Uh, I've heard the new Raptor and Mustang with EcoBoost they sound horrible. Of course it's great for Borla and all the, uh, all the other aftermarket exhaust companies. I talked to Corsa Exhaust about that and they can't do anything. The aftermarket exhaust companies can't do anything. There's not enough there's not enough displacement in the engine to increase the sound of the exhaust that's what corso told me corso builds the exhaust for the corvette and they're like there's nothing we can do and borella as far as i know there's nothing they can do either they can make modifications a little bit but there's just not enough there uh it's too expensive to market as a truck they can jump in the air with dirt over it but at over 70 grand people don't want to ruin it no ranger will looks 15 years old inside already does it really I, again, I'm going to get one next week. I want to see what it's going to look like. Uh, Tim, it looks like you have to explore. I, yeah. No Bronco news. I'm waiting to buy it. I'm thinking it'll come out in June 2020. And we'll arrive in dealers fall 2020. Golly. Hey, good night, DV. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, Bronco news. If I had any Bronco news, I'd be sharing it. It's crazy with the Bronco. Like, come on, guys. Let's do it. Let's get it out. But, uh, yeah, they have not done anything refreshed on that as far as news. I they have refreshing news. I see spy photos, but it's like I, I don't want to buy them because I don't believe some of the spy photos. I There's been a bunch of spy photos lately about a, a Ford Ranger diesel. Uh, uh, they're calling it Ranger Raptor. My spy tiger is called Ranger Raptor. And I just think it's ridiculous. I, I It's it's totally uncamouflaged, driving around nude in uh, Detroit. And I just – I'm not going yet. I got seven minutes. Um, I just think it's 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 – I don't know. I don't think much of that. I think that there is a lot of smoke, and there's not a much fire behind it. And uh, I think the Ranger Raptor diesel will be in uh, Europe and places. I don't think Ford's ready to bring it to the United States. I don't think they're ready to bring it. Any 7.3 liter uh, news? 7.3 liter um, Ford news? No, nothing. Nothing. Sorry. I do have a line, and I need to call this guy. He has 1.3 million miles on his 2000 Ford diesel. I think it's... Was it 6.2 in 2000? I say it's a 6.2. Anyways, 1.3 million miles, same powertrain, or a same engine. I'm not sure of a transmission yet. I need to call the guy. I'm debating about doing a story. I'll be in Texas um, in May. He lives in Humble, Texas. So I'm sure he's a humble guy. And uh, I'm thinking about doing a story on him. If he will allow me to do the story and that kind of stuff. 
So there is some, I have some news that's not related to that. But no, there's nothing from Ford. It's really quiet over in Dearborn. And um, I don't know why. Uh, New York Auto Show is going on this week. Uh, was seven three in 2000? Huh. Yeah, so he's got whatever. He's got whatever diesel is. Heavy duty diesel. And so I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with uh, that guy. But again, it's been quiet in Dearborn. They released the, the Escape. So maybe they did the Escape. They're going to hold off. Um, I got a lot of interest on this channel from the um, Transit video I did. That was shocking. I'm going to go get a Transit and drive it around, uh, do a review on it. Guys were wanting to tow 10,000 pounds of the Transit and carry the, their crew. So contractors load the crew in the car, uh, the Transit, and then tow like they would a heavy-duty um, half-ton truck. They've towed like a half-ton truck. I thought it was really interesting. So um, I don't know. I'm on a tangent a little bit tonight. I'm finishing my crown. Have a good time. Uh, I think people are going to be disappointed with Bronco. That like how people are just pissed. Jim renaming the Kitty at Blazer. Yeah, and what's the new news? Uh, the new news is that they're going to do a Trailblazer. I heard that news the other day, and uh, GM's going to do Trailblazer, and it's going to slot below the bra the Blazer. So it's not going to be the Trailblazer like the big one of old. It's going to go below it. I I think it's a bunch of younger people. In GM's marketing team these days, because I don't understand that. Uh, yeah, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to that. I think I'm going to get a Blazer. What am I listing here? Hold on. Um. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, if you can see my tags, I got my tags for my '62 Chevy C10. You know, they charged me 29 bucks to, to do my truck. That's ridiculous. He's like 50 some years old, and it's 29 bucks still. That's absurd. Um, keep all... all right, here we go. All right, uh, this is my listing I get from the uh, loan agency. Uh, Rangers coming 423. I uh, get Infinity QX80. We're, I think we're going to take the to Rapid City. Acura MDX. I've been shocked about Acura. Do you guys know about Acura? Every time I do an Acura video, it blows up in this channel. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I have the Sienna minivan uh, and Forerunner TRD Pro is on my list, which I've had many times over the years. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be interesting. Why well, haven't we seen a production body of the Bronco like we've seen the Jeep Gladiator, the Shelby GT500? This is the first car we haven't seen the body. Yeah, with cam. Yeah, with camo like a uh, spy photography. So the spy photography, if you notice on this challenge, this story it's a question of day is this new bronco the spy photographer is just convinced that that is the bronco i think it's the south america troller but he's convinced it's the bronco so that's what we're seeing and we haven't seen anything new i don't know what why ford is dragging their heel their heels i guess on that um i think it has to do with hackett hackett's new guy in charge and they're just trying to make it right does the 3.5 Eco Transit have dual injection DI and port like the trucks are just DI? Wow. That's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know, uh, Last Star Foster. I don't know that one. I don't want to make up some BS you won't believe. Um, there's several engine choices in that. Um, I, I did do the press release on that. There's several engine choices. I'm talking diesel, I believe. I don't know if it's got direct and port injection. People will not be sad. It will look retro. I'll look online. I'll not, nothing but Blazer. Yeah. I think they're renaming the tracks. Yeah, the tracks going to be Trailblazer. I think people are disappointed. Good night, Sean. See you later, buddy. Uh, with Cummins using, with Nissan using Cummins, you think the new front end would get a little 2.8? I think so. They did that uh, concept, and we made a bunch of noise about it. All the all journalists were like, yes, 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 yes. And uh, then it hasn't heard anything. So I don't know. I think that's going to be something they're going to do for sure. Okay. That's it, guys. The time has run out. That's a really good question, Last Star Foster. I'm thinking about that. Yeah, I think it's got to have the same, right? Because it's the same engine they're using over and over again i think it's got to be the same engine i don't think they're making a new engine i think it's going to be the same that they've used elsewhere hmm hmm 
That's a really good question. All right, good day, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to work on that 20... Brent, Benjamin, I'm working on that. Um, I'm going to work on that uh, story. Because I have some thoughts on what they're going to do with that. And I have some thoughts on what I think they're going to do with that. So, hey, I'm glad you guys joined me tonight. Glad you did do the OBS software. You lived through it. We survived. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post this live stream. I'm going to respond to comments. I promise you. I'll not be like my competitors. I will respond to comments. Put comments below. We'll figure it out. So, thanks for watching. Um, you know what? I'll see you down the road. As soon as I figure out how to stop this damn thing. <laughs>